question is the uh, the impact of India's evolving tech landscape. Many a times, if you look at the social media chatter, uh, it's a mixed bag of emotions in terms of you know, someone says uh, it should be written off, overvaluation, not working out. Some group says it's very much required. Uh, it's but it's from the index itself. It's a very interesting year. So we had about 25 dropouts. Uh, so that shows that there is an impact on the funding window. About 10 to 12 companies got demoted to cheaters. Uh, but there are about 38 new entrants as well. So it's a very exciting year because this could be the turning point of uh, startups evolution also. I, I, and one interesting fact uh, factors also is that some of these companies are not really waiting to become a unicorn to go IPO as well. So you really see a lot of change in dynamics. Now how is that, how is all this going to impact uh, in terms of progress of the nation and be becoming a developed economy by 2047 or earlier? Firstly, um, while we talk about funding winters, in 2023, VC funding was still close to $8 billion compared to even China, which uh, supposedly slowed down. But the VC funding there was $38 billion. Came down from $138 billion to 38, and we came down from 38 to 8. But it was still significantly much larger in a, in a country that has supposedly slowed down over the last two years. But in India, we still had $8 billion. I feel maybe the investments went into new areas, while fintech continued to be an important one. But I think deep tech, space, uh, you know, defense, uh, many businesses that are using, uh, going to use AI, all came into play. And you know, just to sort of digress a bit, if you just look at some of the numbers, and I'd like to share again, these are staggering numbers. Some of you may be already aware. But as of today, I mean, given the digital infrastructure that the government has put in place, there are close to 1.369 billion Aadhaar cards now. Bank accounts, 96% of Indians have bank accounts. UPI payment transactions have reached 360 million on a daily basis. And the overall value that got transacted was close to $83 billion. There are 900 million plus data users, which is, uh, you know, in terms of per capita data consumption, we are number one in the world. 500 million smartphones, 2x jump in last six years. Online shoppers, 180 million. 457 million uh, users of OTT platform and 500 million Jandan accounts. So I think, you know, that entire infrastructure that was put in place in a good collaboration between the government and uh, private sector, be it optical fibers, rolling out 4G, 5G, or creating digital identity of people through Aadhaar. That has created so many different types of business models and so many sort of unicorns, cheetahs, and gazelles. It's unreal. Without this digital infrastructure, none of these businesses would have existed. So right from, you know, you look at broking, you look at... Uh, access to credit, you look at agri-tech, or so many other different types of consumer tech all got created on the back of the very fact that you could onboard a client, the KYC requirements could be done digitally, and uh, you know the business model started to evolve. So we are seeing that for India, you know, this has been one of the biggest game changers, I would say. Uh, that has taken place as compared to many other countries. When you travel today to Europe and some of the other countries, you just don't find the kind of digital adoption that has taken place in India in any of these countries. So I think that is one key driver. Government along with private and largely government focused uh, support and building and putting the building blocks in place to create all these new models that has led to such a large uh, you know, ecosystem. Even uh, the direct benefits that reached the poor, 60% of them are done digitally today. So out of the $8 trillion, uh, 8 trillion rupees that is given to the poor, 60% is done digitally, which again ensures that the money is reaching where it is required to, and that itself is increasing consumption. So India, 2022 per capita income crossed $2,300 for the first time. This again is a serious inflection point 
we've seen any economy where per capita income crosses 2,300, 2,400, it then creates a decade of discretionary spending and wealth creation. And we are again at that cusp. Uh, and that's the reason I said this decade is probably going to be a golden decade for India. It'll create various business models given the digital infrastructure. We are seeing a little bit of a shift from just FinTech and SaaS oriented companies into now AI, space tech, deep tech, which will increase productivity in a dramatic way and also create many more sort of unicorns. So that was my thought. I mean, it's just mind boggling the kind of uh, new yeah. business models that are emerging. Yeah, uh, you mentioned about AI, space tech, uh, clean tech, but then if you look at it from a unicorn landscape, we haven't really done as well compared to a uh, economy like China and US and compared to the size of the population, if there is these sectors can have the impact, it's going to be a country like in the India, right? You know, impact of what an AI could be a space tech application. Uh, how do you see from your perspective these sectors evolving? Um, the few, the our index is a very good indication of how these sectors would, uh, how some of these promise, most promising companies are being built. Uh, but how do you see these sectors evolving? The other day I was re reading a report that uh, uh, I was attending a conference and uh, the all four panelists were asked a question about where would they invest money. One of them said private credit. Uh, rest, uh, one of them said real estate. The, the guy was from Brookfield. Over the other two uh, said one of them would invest in tech startups in emerging economies, and third said would invest in f uh, traditional families that are uh, getting into tech business or you know digitizing their businesses, um, and they are very poised to create. Uh, let's say if someone like Bajaj could possibly create a very superior. Uh, EV uh, vehicle possibly, right? No. So I, I just want to understand from you, how do you see the evolution of these sectors going on? And secondly, from your experience of meeting with the families and founders and family offices, is there an increased appetite towards backing some of these startups, which could potentially, which has a very high chance of failure? And uh, last one question, I just want to plug in as well. I think you did speak about the income, uh, per capita income of India. Right now, one the important danger is to get into the middle income trap which some of these uh, Asian economies went. So how will these startups and all play, an uh, play a role in terms of pushing this forward faster than one could anticipate? See, I think given India is still an emerging economy and a large population is uh, still poor, uh, government's agenda today is to ensure, I mean, you know, for it to become a developed economy is to ensure that larger part of the population can take part in this whole process of you know transformation that is happening in india and i think like i mentioned digital infrastructure that they've put in place has now given access to people in terms of bank accounts credit um, you know so many other products that they didn't have access to so the government's agenda has been to have a balanced approach uh, I think one of the key things that I heard from Amitabh Khan's uh, discussion, um, you know, on Saturday was they're trying to see how they could use technology to actually help the larger section of the population and not just uh, middle income. For example, agriculture, where a large portion of uh, the country is still engaged in agri. How do you use agri tech to improve the productivity of a farmer? It's a big, big focus area. Keeping aside you know, the whole financial uh, financialization part, which is giving them access to credit and access to various other facilities that come through finance. But how do you improve the lives of a larger section by using technology and improving? You know, one discussion po uh, part was AI in agriculture. How do you try and see whether there are conditions of the soil or you know, areas that are more productive to be, uh, you know, harvested as compared to others. There are lots of features that they are working on. And I think that's one area that's going to be a big game changer. Keeping aside all the other agenda items of the government, I think the biggest dec uh, theme of this decade is going to be climate. And anything related to climate is uh, a big focus area. Even if you look under the PLI scheme, uh, the benefits that are, uh, you know, if you see the kind of industries uh, that they are focusing on, uh, EV, uh, energy, semiconductor, and again, some of the data, semiconductor itself, their plan is to make it a $120 billion industry by FI30. 
if you look at green energy 40 billion uh, you know dollars per year uh, for the next 7 years they intend to spend right or even defense they are thinking of it becoming a 45 billion dollar industry by fy30 so these are the areas where i still feel a lot of action on the startup side is going to take place and we are already seeing many many business models getting created there and i see when we interact with family offices and ultra hnis while earlier for the last 14 years for example we've raised uh, money in venture capital and pe funds of uh, people like chirate idg uh, multiply venture fundamentum which is run by nandan nilakini you are seeing also many family offices and hnis wanting to have direct participation or co investment along with some of them so that appetite hasn't gone institutional money given the way interest rates went up and foreign money may have slowed down and you see it even in the listed equity markets while foreign money has really been moving out over the last two years but domestic flows which are now close to 35 billion dollars are supporting the equity market same thing if you look at in venture capital or pe the institutional money has slowed down but it has been replaced by lots of family offices and ultra hnis who are either participating directly or through various funds and i see that momentum only increasing uh, there is of course a lot of uh, you know i would say from a sector specific uh, from fintech i think the action has moved now a lot towards deep tech and we've also just recently tied up with a fund called sense ai uh, which is largely focused on artificial intelligence they're trying to invest in businesses that are either using ai to improve productivity or creating products out of ai that are going to change the way businesses are run so it's quite vibrant i mean i don't see you know you also had uh, two years of a bull run in equity markets and people have made so much of money that they're looking to uh, book some profits and again take risk with it so yeah. lots happening at a government uh, standpoint uh, lots happening with uh, you know startup founders i only see it increasing that appetite continues to exist and lots with investors the color of money may have changed more from international to domestic but it's uh, remaining uh, strong